All right, let's take a look at the tail of the tape now. Fras Castillo against Herman Ngoju, originally from Cameroon. He's lived in Montreal the last several years. You see the six pound, or excuse me, six year age advantage for Ngoju. They're equal in height at 5'8, an arm length advantage of one inch for the African Canadian fighter measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. You can see that Castillo weighed in, as we said, one pound under the limit, unofficially, has rehydrated 12 pounds overnight, and they later the ring at 151. Ngoju also put on 10 pounds unofficially overnight. He comes in at 150. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Jose Luis Castillo Herman and Gojo fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. And here's Herman and Goju. Larry, we don't know if he'll run in the ring, but we know he can run. Yeah, he was a member of a, a national a marathon team in the Cameroons and says that his best time was a, a very, very commendable two hours and 50 minutes, uh, which may come in useful because he uh, fights very aggressively, full, to, full out, and yet he's able to go the distance and has gone the distance in each of his last five fights. He was a member of the Cameroonian Olympic team in Sydney, Australia in 2000, lost in the first round of the boxing competition. But because he was in Sydney, he was there in the stadium on the night of his nation's biggest athletic moment ever, when the Cameroonian national soccer team upset the Italians in the gold medal game and won soccer gold in Sydney. He says it was one of the biggest nights of his life. As you can see from that brilliant smile, he's an upbeat young man who claims that the reason he can win tonight is that he's not afraid to lose. Emmanuel, he's had fewer than 20 professional fights. Jose Luis Castillo has had more than 60 professional fights. Advantage Castillo? It's definitely advantage Castillo. But still the fact that this guy has such a tight defense and he moves in and smothers, it may still present a problem for Castillo. You know, a lot of times you have these guys that are upbeat emotionally and in good shape, has good stamina, and can maybe be a real dangerous factor going into the late rounds. He can be a problem. But I picked Castillo because of the great experience that Castillo has. And now we prepare for the entrance of Jose Luis Castillo, who may get some boos from American fans in the crowd, although, as I mentioned at the top of the show, the bulk of the crowd appears to be British fans here to support Ricky Hatton. You mentioned, Emmanuel Stewart, that Castillo is a big puncher, most especially a giant body puncher who understudied for four years as the primary sparring partner of the great Julio Cesar Chavez. Yes, I remember when he was very young, when I was training Julio Cesar Chavez, so that's his hero. But I think this weight difference is going to make a big difference because the human body sometimes can just have to lose two pounds and it'll change the whole structure of everything, the way that body functions. It's like crossing maybe 10, 10 feet when you move you from New Jersey to New York. It's a new governor, new set of rules, everything. is only 10 feet. And that's what I think 140 represents to him. Larry, Castillo caught most of the blame for his failures to make weight against Corrales. But shouldn't some of the blame have fallen on the economic interests in the sport for whom it was in their best hope that he could continue to fight at 135 and make money for everybody? Well, he's an adult. He went along with it. Um, they should be criticized for not staying on top of him to make the various benchmarks along the way so that he didn't jeopardize the fight. But we have to remember, in the rematch with Corrales, he was three pounds over, he got fined, he went out and knocked the guy out. Where was the incentive to make 135 again if he got away with it the first time? And incidentally, within the past year, we've seen four veteran fighters, Mark Johnson, Rosendo Alvarez, Jorge Barrios, and most ironically, Diego Corrales, all come to big fights here in Las Vegas and fail to make weight. Now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Paris, Las Vegas, and an evening of world-class professional boxing. 
This first bout is a presentation of Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, Art Palulo's Banner Promotions, and Dennis Hobson's Fight Academy, sponsored by Nemirov, sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout on the 10-point system will be Chuck Jampa, Mike Ross, and Glenn Trowbridge. And with the bell rings, the man inside the ring in charge of the action referee, Robert Bird. And now it's number one versus number two for the WBC mandatory challenger position. 12 rounds of boxing in the super lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, official weight, 140 pounds. This 2000 Olympian now has a perfect professional record consisting of 15 bouts, including nine KOs, 15 victories, originally from Cameroon, now fighting out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada, ranked number two in the world by the WBC. He is the WBC International Super Lightweight Champion, Herman, the Black Panther Lagujo. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue, official weight, 139 pounds. As a professional, 62 bouts, victorious 54 times, including 47 knockouts, with seven defeats and one draw. From Embalme, Mexico, ranked number one in the world by the WBC, the two-time lightweight champion of the world, Jose Luis El Terrible Castillo. Okay, gentlemen, you had your instructions in the dressing room. The only thing I'm going to tell you now is when I tell you to stop, what that means is stop whatever you're doing and give me a clean break. I want you to protect yourselves at all times, obey my commands at all times. Any punch that's on this belt is going to be good. Any punch that's on this belt is going to be good. Any questions? Any questions? Let's do it. On paper, this has all the earmarks of a mismatch. But as a fight guy once said, all life is a mismatch. Castillo, when he's on, is such a dangerous body puncher. Even Floyd Mayweather Jr. had trouble with him in April of 2002. And Gojo has never been tested to the ribcage the way Castillo can do it if his left hook is working tonight. Good jab to start off by Herman and Gojo. Yeah, I like the jab uh, and Gojo because it was even faster than the jab was coming from Castillo, and that could be a big factor. But Castillo's an old pro, Emmanuel, one of those guys who can vary the pace to shock you from around to round. And can punch with both hands, too. There's a lot of fights he's had right now, when you consider that there's about 60 fights or whatever he's had already. There's a lot of experience, in addition to this great sparring sessions he's had with all of the great fighters in Mexico. So with all the struggles to make weight, isn't he an outstanding candidate for that common fighter experience of getting old overnight? Yes, but I don't think that's the case with him right now. I think he's almost like a maybe new career, just the fact that he's fighting where he's comfortable at in his proper weight division. Not only that, but that loss of money makes him at 33 a hungry fighter again. Gujo with the flag imprint, incidentally, on the back of his skull. Both fighters looking very relaxed here in the first round, and you might have thought that with only 15 professional fights under his belt, Gujo would have a little bit of a case of nerves first time in Las Vegas, first time against a fighter anywhere near as good as Castillo, but Emmanuel, he looks it, very within himself. In he there. looks very relaxed about the whole situation, and his punches are actually faster than Castillo. He hasn't did too much, but jail, but when he has executed, he's did it very well. So far, Castillo appears to be just sort of feeling his way into the round. Hasn't really leaned forward and dipped the left shoulder to begin to test that ribcage of Ngujo. Straight right hand by Castillo gets through the guard. Now an uppercut lands, 
And Castillo momentarily there begins to become more active offensively. That was good. He shot four different punches all from different angles. And you're talking about Jose Luis Castillo. Yes, we Castillo shot, I'm sorry, he shot yeah. left hook to the body. And there's the, the left hook to the foot. body again. You're talking about an old pro. He, the intelligence that gives him the right to think that he can become a Mexican politician is quite apparent. And this is a guy, Emmanuel, who loves boxing, watches other fighters, goes to training camps to see what's going on. He's got it all. He's a student of the game, as we say. And right now, Ngojo only can seem to mount a jab. He seems to have had difficulty in doing anything other than landing jabs. And when we go to the corners between rounds, in Ngojo's corner, where they speak French, our interpreter is Terry Gourjon. And in Castillo's corner, where you'll hear Spanish, it's Jerry Olaya. <laughs> Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up for your jab. You gotta be off. You gotta hit him with your jab, man. You got a fast hand. Don't okay. fucking stand with the guy. Okay. You understand? Use the jab, jab, jab. Then you gotta start throwing the right hand. Okay. Come on. Drop, drop, come on. Okay. Hey, look at that, man. Okay. Hey, put it the jab. That's it. That's all he has. Now breathe deeply now. This is just a second. You know, maybe he's being nervous. Maybe he's a bit tentative. With very little, you won that first round. With very little, you're going to win the second. Don't worry. Well, you heard the echo in Castillo's corner of Emmanuel Stewart's observation throughout the first round that all Ngujo was able to do was jab. In fact, CompuBox finds Ngujo landing 12 punches in the first round. All jabs. Castillo landed 21 out of 61, and... If the fight plan is to take it easy a little bit in the early rounds, you heard Castillo's trainer say you didn't have to do much to win that round. You won't have to do much to win the next one. Yeah, right now Castillo seems to be determined to start setting up the tempo a little faster and start doing a more of a variety of things. And, and if Ngojo cannot mount anything but just a jab attack, he's going to have problems. Jab lands again for Ngojo. But Castillo easily slips the right hand. Right hand to the body by Jose Luis Castillo. Castillo's jab is deceptively long. Fights out of a tight envelope, but then the arm extends. And whenever Ngojo does do things, he seems to be fairly effective. It seems like he just is not that comfortable now that, with doing anything but the jab. He seems to be very comfortable jabbing, but not throwing too many other punches. And Castillo changing the pace on that left hook to the body. He landed a soft one, and Gujo stepped up again. Then he landed a much harder left hook to the body. Good jab there by Jose Luis Castillo, but Ngujo comes back with two of his own. If Ngojo would throw more right hands and hooks after his jabs, he would be very effective. Yep, but he'd also be exposed to more Castillo punches because Jose Luis is skilled enough to counter as well as to lead. And as you pointed out too, Jim, Castillo sometimes would do the soft punch and then come right back with a hard punch with a whole different speed. Yeah, the old, the old George Foreman <laughs> trick. Oh, okay, you thought you could handle that one. Now here's something entirely different in the same package. Good yeah. left hook by Ngojo. The first time he's landed a significant punch other than the jab. The combination for Ngujo there. And a momentary look of surprise on Castillo's face as if, oh, you do have other things in your arsenal. Watch your hands. Stop, let him up. Referee Robert Bird warning both fighters to look out for headbutts. Good right hand by Ngujo after Castillo dipped his shoulder to throw that left hook to the body. Perhaps Ngujo was nervous in the first round, as now he seems much more able to let the right hand go. And he's, he's fairly effective when he punches goes. Castillo doesn't seem to be as sharp, uh, as fast as I have saw him in previous fights. He seems to be a little, little bit slower than he normally is today. Languid, you know, as though he's almost too relaxed in there. Uppercut by Castillo, lands, but Ngujo pops him back into the ropes. Throwing a greater variety of punches now. Body shot by Ngujo. And Ngujo lands a left hook. As Castillo now steps up the intensity to fight his way off the ropes. Castillo has twice landed below the belt. Robert Bird hasn't said a word about it yet. And he yanks Ngujo away to end the round.
Shabo! That's How good. Come in, listen. You can't be playing this guy's game. Playing the one, one, one. The one, one doesn't work. This fucking guy, you gotta put combinations. That's come right. in there, Tuta. Pound that force. Come in there, so rapid. Let's go, look at that, Tata. Come on. 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 Throw straight, throw straight, go with the up and then throw the hook. You're doing good, you're doing good. Don't let him build confidence. Don't let him build that confidence. Right here you see Ngojo land a jab. Perfect target to right at the left eye. And if he would continue to do that and put punches behind it, he could be a big, big yes. force in this fight. Boundary box numbers in the second round. Castillo, 26 out of 62, including 20 out of 46 power shots. In Guju, stepped up and landed 15 out of 43 power shots after landing not a single power shot in the first round. Emmanuel, in Guju's corner, is fascinating. Howard Grant, brother of former light heavyweight contender Otis Grant, once fought against Roy Jones, rapidly alternates between English and French, throwing both of them in together. And then there's another person in the corner who speaks to Ngojo from outside the ring in his tribal Cameroonian language. So he's listening to three <laughs> different languages within the minute. It's hard to listen to three different people all speaking the same language, let alone with three different people with three different languages. But, you know, what I'm really interested in, he's supposed to have this great stamina since he does so much of the marathon, track and running, the marathon yeah. running. And if he does have that and can take a good punch, this could be a very difficult night for Castillo as the fight goes on because he's landed more cleaner, accurate punches to me than Castillo is. But it's just his stamina factor what I'm concerned about as the fight goes on. Well, a lot of people are concerned or curious about Castillo's stamina for making weight and see if he can go hard rounds, 10, 11, 12 hard rounds if he has to. Stop, 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 stop. And now Robert Bird is going to talk to Castillo about punches below the belt. There have been a number of borderline and just low punches by both fighters. Good right hand by Ngujo, back. Castillo up. There's the hard left hook to the body, which has typified Jose Luis Castillo's career. Ngujo clocks him upstairs with a left hook. It seems to be dawning on Castillo now that this could be a tougher fight than yes, anticipated. Uh, his punches are, uh, Ngujo's punches are much shorter, much more accurate. And he, when he gets in close, he sometimes gets his body squared away as if he wants to get more power in his left hand. Right, right there. This has the look of one of those nights when Castillo did not 100% take the opponent seriously and is going to have to step up in intensity to get back into his game. Well, I said in the beginning with the tight defense of Ingojo, if, if that defense and he had the stamina, he could be a problem, but he's turning out to be a bigger problem than I even expected. Only 15 pro fights, only nine knockout wins. The last five fights have gone the distance. Castillo got away with another punch below the belt. You know, the other thing here is, of course, Castillo sees an opponent with 15 fights. All the emphasis is on whether he's going to make weight, not on who he is fighting. Well, not to mention the other emphasis on, is he going to fight Ricky Hatton later in the year? There's a mouse building up under the left eye of Jose Luis Castillo, a mark of the increasing danger of Herman Ingujo's right hand. Hit him. Come on. You keep hitting him down. Move your head. Get it on the inside. Get upper and then cross. You, you have to work the body. You have to work the body. Are you okay? okay? Use your left. But move your head. Move your head and work the body. Don't forget to work the body. Okay? But remember, move your head. Work the body, move your head. Don't stay still. Set 
Keep him up, keep him up, keep him up. You might have seen the CompuBox numbers between rounds, which show Ingujo more active, throwing 77 punches. Castillo slightly more accurate. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim, it's a good fight. 29, 28, two rounds to one. Herman and Gojo. Jim, I thought Castillo easily won that first round when he banged the body as well as Jed, but Herman picked up the pace in rounds two and three. In the third round, he was head to head, backing Castillo up, landed real good shots. He even shoe shined him once. He's out working him. So, very, very close fight, a two to one. Herman and Gojo. One thing, Robert Byrne's got to give Castillo a little leeway because Gojo's got that, that cup up high, and Castillo's a body puncher. Emmanuel Stewart, uh, I have the impending sense that there's going to be a headbutt somewhere along the way, the way they're fighting close it, to each other. It very well could be because they all put their heads close together. But the one thing that I, I mentioned coming into the fight that I liked about Ngojo, even though I didn't think he would win, his spirit, the spirit of an athlete means so much. And a lot of guys in these situations come in, you can study their body language and see they come in expected to lose or not sure of themselves, but he seems to be so upbeat, he and his that I give him a, a big chance of winning this fight because of that, if nothing else, if the fight keeps going the way it's going. He came into our 30-minute meeting with him yesterday and smiled the whole time. Sometimes that can mean you're nervous. Sometimes that can mean you're relaxed and having a great time. His commitment to the sport is huge. He came here to fight in Canada because he thought it was the best situation for him. Hasn't seen his family in Cameroon for six years, since 2001. And you can see once again the speed, the short little snappy punches, which are coming with much more accuracy and shorter delivery than Castillo's punches are tonight. Good left hook by the Cameroonian Canadian fighter, Herman Ingujo. Jose Luis Castillo with his work cut out for him, it appears, after the first three rounds. Looking to win this fight and set up a potential matchup against Ricky Hatton, though Hatton also has a potentially difficult assignment let later go, tonight. Let and go, Juan Yurongo. Go, go. Stop! Let's go. Whatever happens in this fight, and Gujo is certainly not fighting like a fighter with 15 professional fights under his belt. It's just going to be going down the stretch when he gets tired. If he can hold up and function mentally and physically while he's tired, it's going to be the big factor. I, I wonder if he's going to be the one with the getting yeah, tired stop, stop, problem. Stop, 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 he's stop, the guy stop, who has run a 250 on, marathon on, and on. says he's completed 10 marathons. Jose Luis Castillo hasn't had a fight in 11 months. But still, the experience of boxing, body to body, punching, banging on against each other, pushing each other, it's a lot different than running a marathon. Well, we mentioned that later tonight, the spotlight is going to be on Ricky the Hitman Hatton. Earlier, Larry Merchant spoke to him in his dressing room. Ricky, why is it so important for you to have this experience in Las Vegas? Um, well, basically, because all the big names in, in boxing fight here now, you know, from your Floyd Mayweather's to your Oscar De La Hoya's, all the big stars in boxing, they all, uh, they all fight here, really. And I consider myself with a couple of wins, you know, the Costa Zoo fight and moving up in to be champion at two weight divisions I'm a, I'm a pound for pounder so I, I should be appearing on the big stage and this is it has the expectations been lived up to or even exceeded uh, exceeded I would say I mean uh, it's the entertainment capital of the world not just for boxing for entertainment full stop and uh, I think everything he's just done in a massive way and uh, you know I'm just hoping for a massive performance tonight. what was it like when you saw your image and name up in lights uh, very excited to, to say the least. I mean, uh, I've been to Vegas umpteen times, you know, watching all the big fights and the big names, and uh, to see my name up there was, was a dream come true. And I, uh, I want the performance, the occasion to be remembered for my 42nd win and not for, lo not for losing my unbeaten record. Thank you, Ricky. The words of Ricky Hatton, and now back to the action in round five of a scheduled 12 between Jose Luis Castillo and Herman Ngujo. Copy box numbers to this point. Castillo 90 out of 227. In Gujo 79 out of 308. But Castillo down to only 40 total punches thrown in the fourth round. His punch rate is dropping. In Gujo's has risen through the course of the fight. And now Robert Bird for the second time. Where on Jose Luis Castillo to keep him up. Castillo has a red mark beginning outside his right eye. And his nose is bleeding. So Ngujo has made his mark already in the fight. We're one minute into the fifth. Castillo's been warned twice for low blows. The next time he'll be penalized. And 
this is not the intensity of the Jose Luis Castillo stop, stop, we've stop, seen stop, stop, in stop the out. past. Yes, so, it's, it's very difficult for him to get a really good rhythm because the opponent he's at is not fighting that much with him. So he's blocking, he's blocking Castillo's punches, placing his punches, and Castillo can't get his rhythm to go on because he can't get the opponent to fight at the rhythm he wants him. And then as a result, these short punches that are coming from Nguju are way more effective than the punches that are more looping shots that are coming from Castillo. Well, you heard Harold Letterman earlier saying that Robert Bird has to give consideration to the placement of the belt on Ngujo, but uh, Castillo landed yet another questionable blow right on the borderline and got away with it moments ago. This is the kind of fight in which penalty points could be extremely significant. Don't get on his head. Get off his head. Stop. 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 Now Bird well, telling Ngujo to get his left arm behind or out from behind the back of Castillo's head. Castillo looking and looking and having a hard time finding the target. And and you get out, is fighting a very good tight defense right, fight right here. And I don't know what Castillo can do more than that just except the hope that Nguzo will just get tired as the fight goes on from the pace and his experience will prevail. But other than that, it's going to be rough going down the stretch for Castillo. It's rough already. As Larry Merton pointed out, his nose is bleeding. There's a bloody mark beginning outside the right eye. There's a mouse under the left eye. Ingujo, by comparison, is unmarked. And he backed Castillo into a corner. Fight. Upset brewing in Vegas. Fight. Fighting, as he said, unafraid to lose. Fighting to win. All the initiative right now belongs to the Cameroonian Canadian fighter, Herman Ngujo. And Jose Luis Castillo looks as though he has bitten off more than he thought he would have to chew. I think, as we said earlier, he thought making the weight was his biggest uh, challenge, I think, in his fight, and underestimated the opponent. No, no, no. Herman, listen to me. Come on, come on, come on. Commence avec le rapport de crochet parce que le gars coupe ici. Comprends? Okay. Après ce fil avec roulette, après ce roule la tête. Comprends? Ok, be quick. You don't, don't wait for him. You have to work. I remember to move your head. C'est calé le guante. Bring your gloves up. Amigo. Sigue insistiendo con los hombres. Use that upper. Use that upper repeatedly. I'm not. Well, you saw the statistical anomaly between rounds made it look like a tennis match. Both fighters threw 55 punches in the preceding round. Both fighters landed 19 by CompuBox count. Round six, and you keep wondering, when is the round in which Castillo will step up his intensity? and begin to show the professionalism that you have to expect from his long and glorious career. Well, his biggest problem, he can't find a clean target to land his punches on. He's missing probably about 75% of his punches because of the good defense of Ngojo. But now Ngojo's rate begins to drop just a little bit too, perhaps beginning to pace himself to be certain of making it through 12. One positive. The main positive of Castillo is he's landing many more body punches. We'll see how that affects the second half of the fight. And that could be the reason that Ngujo's punch output is beginning to drop. One of the anomalies of the sport, often lost on the layman. Over the long haul, body punches hurt you more than head punches. Well, you're not seeing any playing body punches coming from Ngojo at all. But even though Casillas led in some body punches, they're really not that clean as compared to some of the opponents that he's fought in the past. Then he's led the punches cleanly to the body. These are half landing punches. In March, we'll go to Puerto Rico to show you welterweight Miguel Cotto, who is rapidly becoming perhaps the premier body puncher in boxing. His left hook to the body right now, about as dangerous a weapon as the sport offers. And now Castillo steps back and points the top of his head, saying to Bird, we're buddy. No blood. That's a lucky thing. Hard right hand over the top by Ngujo. And the left hook upstairs. Now big left hook by Castillo. Ngujo comes right back with a right hand. 
Combination by Ngujo. Castillo with a big left hook to the body and upstairs. Both fighters stepping up their intensity in the last 30 seconds. And it finally seems to have dawned on Jose Luis Castillo that he's got a tough fight in front of him. Tonight. Yes, and he's fighting that right now because it's a very good chance that this fight will go to limit where I think he expected a knockout earlier, so he's going to have to start fighting as if he's preparing to try to win a decision if it goes to that. And he's starting to unleash that left hook to the body Punch over and go. over and over. Well, they may wear the opponent down, but if nothing else, he's got to start trying to put those points in the bank right now. I think those body shots are starting to make and, and Gudu's ugly, sagging socks sag even more. Pretty easy to forget that this is not just a coronation of Ricky Hatton night. Here's Juan Irango of Colombia. He's the guy who, in a title fight set up after Hatton vacated the title at 140 pounds last year, defeated a Moroccan fighter named Al Raba to take the championship. Naofel Ben Raba, I should say, beat him in a decision in Hollywood, Florida, and took over the title. He's a strong, come forward fighter. And in fact, the Hatton fight against Urango can be expected to be a collision because Ricky never takes a backward step. And Urango has vowed that he won't take one either. Juan Urango defending a 140 pound title belt against Ricky Hatton, who used to have that belt in the main event. Between rounds, Jose Luis Castillo finishes talking with the man in his corner and then spends the last 20 seconds of the round laughing and joking with photographers at ringside. You talk about an old pro. Yeah, he's very relaxed. And the one thing going down the stretch with a, with a experienced fighter, when, when he's tired, he can function, maybe like uh, you say, on automatic pilot because he's... He has been doing things so long he can do it instinctively and automatically without thinking. Harold Adamai, how do you have it midway through the fight? Attention, four rounds to two, 58-56, Herman and Gujo. Jim, I gotta tell you, in yeah, rounds five and six, I thought and Gujo outworked them. I know to punch that statistic for oh, round five stop, even, stop, 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 but stop, this stop, kid's throwing combinations. Stop. And basically, Jose Luis Castillo's throwing one at a time. And I think that's what's gonna grab the eye of the judges. So, so far, through half the fight, I've got it four to two in Gojo, and we'll have to see what happens in the second half. I have it head, as an even fight. Now Gojo lands a low blow. That was on the other side of Bird. I think it's, a, it's not a good move for Gojo to try to get, get engaged in trying to throw body punches with Castillo. Because Castillo is a way much more effective body puncher. And Gojo should just concentrate on simple straight punches to the head. Because his body punches are not that effective. And here, Herman begins crowding Jose Luis against the ropes. Trying to wear down the guy who seems to be a naturally bigger fighter and might have been expected to wear him down with body punches. I thought I saw blood pouring from the mouth of Ngujo. The trunks are beginning to slip off of the guard, exposing more and more of that Reyes guard around the waist of Ngujo and making it clearer and clearer how high the guard is. And I think perhaps as a result of that, Castillo has been given more elbow, leeway in the last three rounds by Robert Byrd to throw those punches right on the belt line. Yeah, exactly. And that's why he said punches on the belt line up there he'll permit because it's such an extremely unusually high protective cup. I'll never forget the night in a fight like this when Roger Mayweather's trunks dropped down off the guard and Pernell Whitaker just for laughs reached out and then moved the trunks down all the way to Mayweather's knees. Mayweather was so infuriated that he flew a vicious right hand and knocked down Whitaker, who at that point was virtually knocked down proof. Now, if Ngojo would fight the way he just did with those little short punches to the head, forget body punching, he would win this fight much easier. But as it's going down the stretch, I see it as like a toss-up fight. Right hand upstairs for Ngujo after two hard left hooks to the body by Jose Luis Castillo. Whatever happens, there are some very nervous people in this audience tonight who are hoping for a Hatton Castillo showdown. And this fight is getting better by the minute.
There's a look at Ricky Hatton, the hitman. Dynamic intensity. Hatton warms up the way he fights. Non-stop action. What do you like about Ricky Hatton? Simply this. There isn't a fighter in the sport who can be more guaranteed to fight 180 seconds of every round. When you go to see Ricky Hatton fight, you're going to get your money's worth because he'll give you everything he's got. Right here, you see a little short left uppercut that Castillo brought up right between that tight defense that in Jojo holds, but he came right between the gloves. And here's a body shot that you see right there again. And that was not on the cup. That was, that was the kind of punches that take their effect as the fight progresses. But while our replay focused on Castillo's effectiveness, Compu Box numbers for the round found Castillo 25 out of 67, in Gojo 36 out of 74. Highest number of punches landed in the fight by Ingujo and also the highest number of punches thrown in the fight. As I said, the fight is getting better from minute to minute. Castillo has definitely stepped up his intensity and is beginning, beginning to look more like the old Jose Luis Castillo. Ingujo is trying to step up and stay right with him as well. Well, if I was in Castillo's corner, I would have some serious concerns because there's no one strategy I can see that would work except to just get in and try to set the pace a lot faster, keep punching a lot more because I think Castillo has the stamina. But in, in Gojo's case, it would be easy to instruct him to win, just keeps throwing little short punches to the head and hope his stamina holds up. Castillo hammering away now repeatedly with body shots, trying to take the air out of Ngujo's balloon. He's going to have to do that because skill-wise, I don't think he has any technical one particular punch that would be effective. He just got to just try to outwork him, so to say, with just a volume of punches. Once again, you're watching a fight between the man in the light blue trunks, Jose Luis Castillo, who has had 62 professional fights and has won 47 of them by knockout in his career. Herman Gujo comes in with a record of 15 and 0, nine knockouts. He had a difficult time against five foot two inch John Brown. He was knocked silly in the 12th round and almost knocked out in a fight he won against Emmanuel Augustus. Neither of those fighters anywhere near in the same league with what Castillo is supposed to be. So you're looking at the performance of Ngujo's life up to this point. But I think Castillo, I'm looking at it, Castillo's facial expression. I think he's taking this fight extremely serious now. His whole mindset is totally different now. He's going to be a much more difficult opponent and do a lot more aggressive power punching. And it still might not be enough, Emmanuel. He's behind on Harold Letterman's scorecard to this point in the fight. May well be behind on the official tourist cards as well. It's an interesting scoring team, which we'll show you later on because you've got two veteran judges and one whom we've never seen before. Roll time. It's a good box. Robert Bird looking at the gloves to see if there's something wrong with either glove, a lace or a piece of tape. Nothing there. So they go back to work. Let him out. 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 Come on, 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 come on. Hey, 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 come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. We're going to keep this thing clean, okay? You understand me? We're going to keep it clean, right now. Okay, right. And in case you're wondering, yes, they both understand it because though Castillo does not speak English in public very much, he certainly understands it from all his years in the gym. And he's spent a lot of years in the gym, too. Well, I mean, how many thousands of rounds of sparring has a fighter like Jose Luis Castillo had? You couldn't count them, right, Emmanuel? But what made it so unusual about it, even when he isn't training himself, he likes to go to the gym and watch other fighters train. His father was a, was a boxer. As a child, he used to show his stuff in the ring when his father fought, and people would throw coins at him. How many fighters could weather four years as the primary sparring partner for a destroyer like uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, only Castillo? You've got to close them well. You've got to close these rounds well, strong. And if you feel like you're going to knock him out, throw a lot, throw a lot. Come on, you feel like you're going to knock him out? Throw it. Throw and move. He's not winning me. He's not beating me. Ah, but don't, get, don't be filled with confidence. You can win it, but you've got to be, you got to be pre pressing. That's a fascinating conversation. Tiburcio Garcia and Miguel Diaz are trying to convince Jose Luis Castillo that he's in trouble in the fight. Castillo's disputing them and saying, I'm not losing this fight. 
That was amazing. Interpreter Jerry Olaya right on top of it there in Castillo's corner. Total in round eight. Castillo landed 17 out of 48. And Gujo dropped after the preceding round. He had his high output of the fight. This was his low output. Only six of 42. What a contrast. Well, I, I tell you what, I do like what they, exactly what they was telling us here, exactly what I was thinking in my mind. But it's very difficult to have a fighter who won't listen to his corner. And Lennox Lewis thought he was winning the fight with Holyfield. I said, you must win this last round big. He looked at me like I was crazy. But if he didn't have did it, he would not even got to draw even. Nature of and the fight the is, if I were Lennox, I would have looked, like, looked at you like you were crazy too. But the bottom line is, if he had not won the last round against Evander Holyfield in Madison Square Garden, he wouldn't have even gotten the totally unjustifiable draw, which was the result in the fight. But Lennox always did whatever I asked him to do. Whether he believed or not, he would have got him to do it. But Castillo, I think, is taking his fight more serious from here on in. And it looks better for him to me the way I look at it now because Ngojo seems to be showing a little fatigue even though he's still punching. Emmanuel, in recent weeks we've seen, number one, that Vladimir Klitschko can listen to you and respond, as he did against Calvin Brock. And number two, that maybe Jermaine Taylor doesn't hear you all that well from round to round to round. Uh, that's what Jermaine Taylor admitted to me at 131 and after his last fight. But he says it would be better in the future. He admitted that he wasn't following instructions at yet. Second time, because he didn't yeah. really follow instructions against Winky, right? And he failed to do it again against Kasim Uma. Well, we've been lucky to get by two tough fights in the world. And that's what Miguel Diaz and Tiburcio Garcia were trying to impress upon Jose Luis Castillo. But he can't take anything for granted in this fight. And he's not going to beat Ngojo on a skill level. He's just going to have to just keep working and punching with a lot of punches and punching with power. Hold and him. Let him go. Let him go. Watch you get out. Watch you get out. Just five or six taps to the side tends to add up. Yep, and the fact that he's still punching and, 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 and any time the human body is being hit with anything, even if his own arms are enough, it takes an effect. Stop, 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 stop. Well, one more at the time. beginning of stop the next round, we will that. see what Harold Letterman's so scorecard shows us with three rounds remaining in the fight, assuming, of course, that we're going to make it to the end of this well, round. Stop, and right stop, now, there's no reason to expect a knockout from either fighter. Neither man has been in any way in trouble, at least as far as wobbling or being close to being knocked down. It's just been a hard-spirited fight throughout. You see now, Castillo throwed a lot of little right-hand leads, which is a very good punch when fighters are tired because you don't think that well, and you're always looking for the left. But right-hand leads become very effective late in the fight. And Castillo's throwing more of them as the fight goes on. Now, Gujo rallying down the stretch as though trying to steal around. That's a veteran fighter's tactic, but he tried to pull it off there. Tune in next Wednesday to Inside the NFL. We'll have exclusive NFL hi films highlights of both championship games, plus Super Bowl predictions from Bob, Dan, Chris, and Chris. And on Real Sports, story of how NFL films began as a small family company and then grew to be the image makers of the National Football League. Hey, Herman, who will I do it? Who will I do it for the job? You have to use your right after the jab. Jab, 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 and then the right hand. You have to use combination and keep busy. this fucking fight to survive. We want to win this fucking guy. You understand? You fight like a fucking survivor. Let's go. Howard Grant stepping up the intensity verbally in Ngujo's corner. One question here is whether because in... The underdog, the unknown, and Gujo is doing better than expected. Whether we're giving him a little bit too much credit or whether the judges are. Well, let's see how Harold Letterman sees it. What do you got, Harold? Okay, Jim. 86, 85, five rounds to four, Herman and Gojo. Jim, I got to tell you, Jose Luis Castillo came on in the last two rounds. Herman started to look like he was tired. You know, backing up, not very busy, not getting off the way he was before. Castillo's not fighting a very exciting or a very ex uh, inspired fight, but somehow or another, he does enough, just like he did right there, you know, to win these last two rounds, while Gojo seems to be fading. Yeah, five rounds to four in Gojo. I but have it, it five it, rounds to four for Castillo. Well, it, uh, there you go. If Harold's... The card is correct. Castillo could win two of the last three rounds and only wind up with a draw. If Larry's card is correct, Castillo wins two of the last three rounds, he winds up with a win. 
even though in Gojo is the more accurate punch, I think, and I still the work ratio of Castillo cannot be underestimated and unappreciated. He still has been consistent where in Gojo, other than this first part of this round, has been very inactive with the last two rounds. And I think even though maybe Castillo haven't landed a big knockout punch, he's been busy enough, I think, to win those rounds. Well, given the business situation, Larry, is it fair to guess that nobody's rooting harder for Castillo in these last three rounds than Ricky Hatton in his dressing room? No, stop, stop, I think stop, stop, stop. Ricky Hatton Go. is uh, probably more nervous <laughs> now in his like, dressing yeah, room like Bernard Hopkins than he was ever Phoenix been. Stern when <laughs> Phoenix Stern was fighting Oscar De La Hoya. You know, but, but if Hatton wins his fight, no matter what the outcome here is, there'll be someone out there for right, him to you, fight. I got you, I got you, I got you. I remember the night the deal belly Hurtado jumped all over Brunel Whitaker in New Jersey while Oscar De La Hoya was standing by waiting for his date with Whitaker. It was life and death for Whitaker to come back. He had to turn into a power puncher and knock Hurtado out to win the fight. And Gujo stepping it up a little here. Then Jojo steps it up. He wins this fight easy. Just that can he maintain that because Castillo can't stop him when he starts punching. He cannot block in Jojo's punches. Robert Bird has done an excellent job of keeping the fight under control, preventing headbutts, managing not to have to penalize Castillo after warning him twice for low blows. This is a well-refereed fight. I agree with you. And I'm glad to see him get to work one of these big fights well, like this. Is it. Exactly. He's been a little bit lower down in the hierarchy of Nevada referees, and here's a bigger assignment than usual, and he's doing terrifically well. And he was a good referee in California also before coming to Punch Nevada. Let's go. Let's work. How'd you get out? Early and conclusive tenth round, and once again, a fight that's all, like that's all, that's all. this. The personalities and the backgrounds of the judges could come into play. Meanwhile, we talked about Ricky Hatton and his response, and surely there's a television monitor in there somewhere. But Hatton is focusing now on hitting the pads and getting ready for what he's going to do against Juan Urango. Interestingly, he's hitting pads from a man who's standing in a conventional stance. Urango is a southpaw. Emmanuel, why wouldn't he ask the guy to turn around and put his right hand in That's front? interesting. When I do work on a pass with fighters, if you're fighting a southpaw like Latimer and Crisco be praying for Chris Beard, I always worked on a pass from a southpaw position so he would get comfortable punching with the body at that angle. I just think that's a mistake. Tell him to turn around and put the right glove in front. Urango's not going to stand that way. I agree with you 100% on that, John. Juan Urango against Ricky Hatton next. Down to box numbers through 10 rounds. Jose Luis Castillo, 210 out of 564. Herman Gujo, 183 out of 668. Harold Letterman gave the round to Castillo and has him dead even through 10. Here come the championship stop, round. Stop. Castillo's stop. never had a knockout stop. Stop. past the 10. He hasn't lost a decision since the second loss to Floyd Mayweather all the way back in 2002. Whoever throws the most punches is going to win these next two rounds. It's that simple. If Ngojo decides to punch consistently for the next two rounds, he would win these next two rounds very easy. Much easier than Castillo. It's a copy box fight. Well, but you say decides to. How about whether he can? No matter what he decides. <laughs> There's a big left hook to the body by Castillo. To my mind, that's the, the big question in the fight. Can Castillo make his left hook to the body the dominant factor in these last two rounds? That's the way he wins fights. Well, in Gojo has been given instructions. Both guys have been getting great instructions in the corner. Howard Grant has been giving the proper instructions to his fighter. And Castillo, but it's the idea of who can put out. I know the veteran fighter can do it off of the experience. The younger fighter, if he can punch and put out, he can win this fight very easy because he lands punches cleaner and much more easier. Well, to paraphrase Boris Becker, when you get to the championship rounds, it's not about boxing. It's about who you are, how deep your commitment, what you're willing to put out there. And that's what made a lot of the great fighters, such as Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, all of them, because they put out in those last rounds. Becker's phrase, of course, was when you get to the fifth set, it's not about tennis. Larry, we should give credit to the Canadian-based promoter of Ramon and Gujo, Yvonne Michel. He's the one 
who didn't think it was going to be that huge a gamble to put his fighter into this fight against Castillo when some people saw it as way too soon and folly. That's true, but he took everything into account. The fact that he's not a very young fighter, he's 26, the fact that he had an extensive amateur background, and sometimes whatever your agenda is, you have to take your chance when it comes. And you know, he hasn't anything to lose. It's not like he's a household name and a loss would hurt him. He's became bigger in this fight, win or lose, than he was before coming into this fight in addition to getting a pretty substantial purse. 100% the correct. Line, they were trying for a fight with Stevie Johnston. Made two separate stop, stop, efforts stop, stop, to get him into the ring with Stevie Johnston. But if he beats Stevie Johnston, he doesn't gain nearly as much as he does from the showing he's made tonight against Castillo. And he's making a very good showing tonight. Well, he's, he's making such a good showing that uh, some fighters would not be interested in getting in there with him. He is... Dangerous. Not dangerous necessarily from a physical damage standpoint. That's all, that's all, that's dangerous all. Dangerous from the standpoint of whether you're going to win the fight. Yeah, you can't count on putting him on your resume as a W. Last round. Last round now. Last one, last one. Come on. All your effort. All your effort. Listen to me, Herman. You have to, you have to work on the inside. You have to work outside. You have to throw the jab. Right or left? Right or left? Come on, you've got to, got to win this one. This is decisive. You've got to win this last round. Come on, let's go. The old pro, Castillo, has huge incentives here, including trying to get out of the financial hole with a big fight in the offing. Fighters showing each other respect as the 12th round begins. Castillo slightly better than Ngujo in copy box numbers in the last round, 16 out of 55. And 10 oh, out stop, of 64 in good joke. Castillo landing 16 out of 50 power shots. So if you go by the CompuBox numbers, and we said it was a CompuBox fight, maybe Castillo won the 11th round. Meanwhile, interpreter Jerry O'Leary reports between rounds, Castillo told the men in his corner that his right hand is free hurting. Up, free up, free it's not the right hand is going to win the fight for him. It's the left. Yeah, but he's going to have to let the punches go regardless of what, because he's his whole future to oh, something no, no, he may no, be no. on the line in this last round here. Well, how many times oh, have we work, seen Arturo Gatti break free. his right hand, wait for 30 seconds, and then go right back and, to using it the same way? And not only have his hands broke, but have his hand broke, also have his jaw hurt, his ribs fractured, and everything, and still punch. But that's not going to be too many Arturo Gatti's on. Several months ago, German fighter Arthur Abraham had his jaw broken by a cosmic puncher named Edison Miranda from Colombia, who was tremendous on boxing after dark in December. Abraham fought more than eight rounds with the broken jaw against Miranda, who's a huge right-hand puncher, and won the fight anyway. And it was seriously broken. I mean, to the point where he couldn't even hold his jaw closed, and it was like a big ball in his jaw, and still he fought. No damage like that in this fight, but there's a big left hook from Castillo. Castillo trying to make a dominant imprint with his left hand here in the 12th and seal the fight. Punch it out! Ngujo has not been as effective the last few rounds, but he's trying to rally again. His punches just haven't made the kind of imprint no. in Castillo, the closing part of the fight. Castillo's fight, see those little right-hand leads, which are very effective while this guy's tied. Castillo's winning a fight by outworking his guy and using his experience. But Ngujo appeared to win the first half of the fight. So what happens on the scorecards? Well, you got to give Castillo high marks coming into a fight against an unbeaten, unknown, all the pressure on him about weight. And here, in the late rounds, turning it up. And let's give credit to both fighters. Ingojo has way outperformed what was expected of him. Castillo has had to rise consistently during the fight to stay with him. Both guys have done their jobs. seconds left in a very close fight. Who makes the last statement? Castillo wants to. Ngujo backing up. 
Ten seconds to go in the fight. Left hook by Castillo. And Guto lets go of Flurry. He's bleeding from the nose. Uppercut misses for Castillo. And they finish down the stretch. You know, sometimes in a fight like this, who looks the fresher impresses judges a lot, too. Or who looked like they could win that 13th round if it occurred. In that case, I would say Castillo. Later on, you're going to see Ricky Hatton in the main event. Part of the stakes for Jose Luis Castillo now as we await this decision. The potential for a big money matchup against Hatton later on this year. Harold Letterman, how did you finish up? You know, Jim, it ran 11 to 12. Herman Aguja was sucking air. I mean, his mouth was wide open. He was out of breath. But yet, in the 12th round, Jose Luis Castillo didn't fight. Herman Aguja won the 12th round. No doubt about it. I got it a draw. Six, uh, six rounds apiece, 114, 114. I have it seven rounds to five for Castillo. Most importantly, it was a good fight. All right, let's take a look at the judges who are going to make the decision. One of the best, Chuck Jampa. 114 title fights. One of the five judges out of six who had Taylor beating Hopkins in their two fights here in Las Vegas. Mike Ross of Florida. Never seen him before. And Glenn Trowbridge of Nevada, only 11 title fights. That's a very thin dossier. But in the one notable fight we've isolated here, Moskayev ahead of Rockman, 105-104. As they went to the 12th, Moskayev won by knockout. That score is very consistent with what was going on in the fight. You know, one of the guys from Ngojo's camp just came over here and gave us a signal, said, now you guys realize he belongs in the league with the big fighter. So and I think regardless of what is the result, they feel that they have a victory tonight because of his performance and now that people will respect him now. And Ngujo hoists Castillo up and they hug and smile and show the sportsmanship that is so often exhibited in the wake of a fight like this. And now Michael Buffer stands by with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Chuck Jampa scores the bout. 115-113 for Nagujo. Mike Ross scores it. 115-113 for Castillo. And Glenn Trowbridge scores it. 115-113 to the winner by split decision. Jose Luis El Tamible Castillo. Hear the response of the crowd. Call it the narrowest possible escape. Castillo with so much on the table in terms of rescuing his reputation from all the controversy of the past year and a half and trying to set up a big money matchup with Ricky Hatton manages a split decision by the narrowest possible margin and moves on. But now there are as many questions as ever about the future of his career. Well, I, in my mind, unofficially, I wasn't cutting, scoring it tightly. I gave the fight to Steele. I, uh, but I think his future Steele looks good because he was a little difficult opponent with a tight defense tonight and who was probably underestimated. And Gojo won the crowd. There's no question about that. Castillo landing 245 out of 682 by copy box count. 37 more punches landed, 101 more, or excuse me, fewer punches thrown. Quite often, the fighter who throws the most punches, and that's a 100-punch margin there, is the one who's going to win the support of the crowd because, frankly, the members of the crowd can easily see who's throwing. They cannot as easily see who's landing or judge the effect. And here's the real difference. Castillo landing 54 more power punches, and by and large, Larry, he's the harder puncher. The 8-1 to one underdog naturally won the drama of the fight by making a better fight than anyone thought he was capable of. But the favorite won the fight. 